Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome to the Three Gun Show, your source for technique, strategy, and match recon. Brought to you by Armalite Rifles, LAG Tactical, and British Shotguns. I'm your host, Dave Hartman. This week's episode, Adam Maxwell and I are going to talk about division jumping. This podcast is brought to you by LAG Tactical. I've been using LAG gear for three years now, and I just got an upgrade into their new for 2018 MCS mag pouches. MCS stands for Modular Carry System and is a two-piece design that fits most double-stack 9 and 40 mags and most AR mags. That means I can loan gear to someone in need on the range, even if we're shooting different guns. I've been using these pouches for many matches now, and they've been great. I like that you can choose the retention based on what is required by the stage, Speed Demon or Locked In Tight. I've been shooting the Low Cut Supernova holster as well, and it has been a dream. They make it in a mid and high cut too if you're into that, but I'm digging the low cut. Super fast draws and plenty of retention when you need it. Check them out, lagtactical.com and use code 3GS in all caps to save yourself 10% when placing an order. This podcast is brought to you by Breda USA, Italian shotguns that are the best in the world. And this is a shotgun tech tip from Team Breda. Hey, this is Dave Hartman from The Three Gun Show, and I'm with Tina Martin-Nims from Team Breda, and we are going to learn about choke selection. So before you go out to the match, you want to make sure that you have an understanding of how, um, what your chokes are patterned at. So what I like to do is I take, I have my three main chokes that I usually use, which is a spreader, an IC, an improved concilinder, and a mod. And I set my targets out at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. And it's just like a knockover steel and a flipper. And I test to see what those cho- how they perform at those distances with the ammo that I typically use. And so when I go out onto a stage, I already know that at, say, 35 yards, I can use my mod choke and knock it out. And I'll be all right, ready to go. Awesome. All right. Well, that's your tech tip from Tina martin Nims of Team Breda. Check out Breda's B12i three-gun ready inertia-driven shotgun at BredaUSA.com. That's B-R-E-D-A. Adam, how you doing? We're going hunting, Dave. Hunting? Yep. We're hunting, hunting for division wins and trophy plunder. <laughs> awesome. Well, the... Uh... The, the topic is perfect for you because uh, you've been accused of both many a time. Whoa. Whoa. I'm just calling them like I see him, man. Yeah, that is that is true. I have, I have been accused of that from time to time. Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And, uh, and it's, you know, something that, that I've, like, kind of, I don't know, I guess I've, I've pointed out in the past, maybe not on the show, but uh, I pointed out in the past when I've seen people doing it and then kind of, you know, sneered or joked around, maybe gave them a little bit of a hard time. But now that I'm going to be doing it, <laughs> we're going to talk about the best practices and how to uh, jump divisions and why you'd want to uh, play in different divisions. How's that sound? It sounds pretty good. I mean, there's definitely some truth to it. I think there's definitely people who have done it before. But then at the end of the day, sometimes girls just want to have fun. And, uh, you know, it's just... Uh, <laughs> It's just nice to, to branch out into the other divisions. There's more than one way to three guns, and uh, most of us also own more than three guns. So, Yeah, so that that's one thing I've noticed, uh, Adam, is that three gunners seem to be super spenders when it comes to uh, to gear, right? I, I don't understand. <laughs> well, uh, I, I guess, like, uh, it was it was pointed out to me by by Dylan recently. Cause you know, I've always thought about it that way. I've had that conversation with Jesse Tischauser a couple times and everything, but, um, Dylan pointed out to me that, you know, he's got a, a bunch of USPSA friends in, uh, uh, in his area in, in Kansas city there that he, uh, shoots with regularly. And, you know, they give him a hard time for being unclassified and a sandbagger and all that. <laughs> and, and, and then kicking their butts of course. But, uh, you know, part yeah, of that—that's what that is. Yeah, part of that conversation comes with a a lot of a little bit of jealousy on getting the, uh, excuse me, the their their collective butts whooped, but also 
jealousy as far as like sponsorship goes that you know like a lot of guys are like well why do you have this sponsor this sponsor this sponsor because uh you know you're not even that good you know in their eyes right and oh yeah 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 and his uh uh dylan's response was you know you you bought one gun seven years ago and you're still mastering it (laughs) you know we're three gunners we buy new stuff all the time and a lot of times I think it's like to our detriment, but it, it's also what makes us an attractive band of consumers to advertisers and why there's way more sponsorship in three gun than there is in, uh, in a lot of pistol sports. Well, absolutely. I mean, I can even look at myself, for example. I mean, I need more guns. Like I need another hole in the head, but I decided to uh, um, change divisions this year. And, you know, it's, it's May, and, and uh, I don't even really have all of them yet. Like, I got one of them just last week, you know, on Friday. So, like, you know, I, we're, we're, always, we're always shopping for new stuff and, and getting, getting new widgets or changing things up. The, the game's evolving, the technology's evolving, and, you know, people's, you know, skills, tastes, and preferences are, are evolving too. So, yeah, no, we're definitely, definitely changing stuff all the time. On the whole, I would say a lot of people are, are always kind of making – making adjustments to their their equipment yeah for sure and it's it's still it's still an arms race you know no matter no matter what division you play in like a lot of people think like oh you know i'm gonna go play in uh uspsa production because it's less gear intensive than uspsa limited but now you're just buying a different three thousand dollar gun and adding a different thousand dollar um set of modifications to it you know there's there's that kind of thing and it also extends to three gun you know that i know i know guys that go through compensators like i i fill up my my truck with diesel you know <laughs> it's 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 oh uh, yeah it's amazing or they're um they're just negotiating this curve of kind of i don't know if i would even call it mastery but like understanding or or um appreciation of the game like like, uh, you know, I was in retail for a while, so I kind of had um, accelerated exposure to people going through the process of getting started in 3-Gun. And so, uh, you know, they would they would buy their, their first or maybe even their second, you know, the first handgun for competition. And they would be like, well, which one do you think I should get? And I would be like, X and Y, X or Y, you know. And they would be like, well, I like Z. And I'm like, that's cool, but I'm gonna you're going to be right back here in six months buying, buying X or Y. Well, what do you mean? I'm like, hey, man, I... You know, not for nothing, I don't mean, you know, and of course this is not how I said it, but, well, this isn't exactly how I said it, but, <laughs> like, I was like, I was like, just trust me, man, I've sold the same serial number of Zs to six people, like, they all come back, you know, and maybe you don't believe me now, but you'll be back. Yeah. You know? So, um, you know, and, and if I could write, you know, if I could write a letter to me, or, you know, if a future me could have gone back and told me to, to buy this or that, or don't do this, or go this direction... I wouldn't have believed them. You know, my first AR, I was like, no, M4 clones look like fun. That's what I want to shoot. I don't really care about being competitive. Dumb. You know, I wish, I wish, uh, you know, I wish I wouldn't have, but at the same time, like, there's no way I would have talked, talked a, uh, a younger me out of that. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's funny that you, that you say that because, you know, I've been doing these, uh, three gun one-on-one classes and I've been trying to stop people from making poor purchase decisions that I made. Uh, in the past, right, or that you know, several friends have made, or you know, learn fr- learn from my mistakes, learn from the travels that I've done, learn from the big investment that I've I've put into the podcast and the people I've spoken to, right? Right. But you can only lead a horse to water. You cannot stop that horse from drowning itself in the water. You know that is absolutely <laughs> true, and it's uh, absolutely true. And uh, on the other hand, though, um, I think. Being told that the stove is hot and learning the stove is hot are two vastly different things. And when I look back at the uh, um, the purchases that I've made and the gear that I've used over time, I don't look back and regret anything. It's not like I, you know, I did start out with that M4 clone, but I started out with uh, with the intent of using three gun to polish my my self defense or my shit hits the fan skills or whatever. Um, I started with a, a Glock 17 because it was what I had. I started with a Mossberg 500 pump because it was what I had. And and I don't regret starting that way. However, when when trying to discuss uh, pistol purchases with new students, you know, you kind of like try to try to shortcut that for them. 
and let them know like, hey, eventually you're going to you're going to end up here. So let's let's try to get you in there to begin with. But when you're talking about um, purchasing a, a game f- or a gun for a game, when someone doesn't al- already have something that they can shoot, like a suitable pistol, then most people are like, okay, well, I could probably stomach 500 bucks or 550 or 600, whatever it is, right? But Correct. spending $3,500 on a 2011 is out of my budget, and it's more than I'm willing to to invest to see if I like this game or not. So a right. lot of a lot of times I think we need to make excuse me, we need to make those baby steps. But there are times when we just want to have new toys. Like <laughs> like the the perfect example is uh you and I were at Arms and Arms when uh, when you worked there and you were showing me around like all the the cases and everything. And by the way, if you're in a gun store and it, you're out of state looking at handguns. It's the best position to be in because you can play with everything and not worry about uh, going home with something. True story. <laughs> and if you got Adam following you around with the keys, it's even better. But uh, there was that. <laughs> <laughs> there was that. Uh, that oddball STI. It was a double stack forty five ACP six inch long slide. Right. Oh yeah. Remember that thing? Like that thing oh, was yeah. was like clown shoes big. I couldn't. Yep. Had a bird's nest in its barrel too. <laughs> Not neither of us could think of a reason to to shoot that thing. Like there's there's no game that it was appropriate for. Yeah, yeah, so, for real. But it was looking at that that pistol. It was so appealing. Is like God. What is it about this that like makes me want to take it home and and put it on my belt and have a nice barbecue? Yeah. Right. Or, um, like, on the flip side, too, uh, you're talking about, like, the $3,500 pistol. Um, <clears throat> I was actually tra- talking to Travis Vogel, who, who's uh, my roommate right now. Uh, one night, we were, I had a conversation with a particularly difficult customer. And most most people, they kind of roll off your back. But there's there's a few of them that follow you home. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I was talking to him about it. And, you know, I, I told him, you know, I said this, that, and the other thing. He's like, dude. Like, I was the same way when I was in customer care. Like, I just wanted to, like, inform people and, and give them the, the right answer and help them understand. But he's like, that guy that you were talking to, he's like, have you ever seen that movie, Band of Brothers? I'm like, yeah, I've seen Band of Brothers. And he's like, you know when they, they go and they find the, the concentration camp? I'm like, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, they see all those starving people and, like, the soldiers try to go up and feed feed the prisoners. Mm-hmm. And the one the other guy stops them. He's like, no, you can't feed those guys. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, they're they're not ready. Like, you'll you'll hurt them. You'll you'll kill them if you give them that kind of food. And he's like, that's what that guy was like. Like, Whoa. you were right. You were right, but he was not ready to hear that. And now, if you go back to like a couple episodes ago, and he had Mike Whitesides on here, and he talked about how yeah, the, the shotgun costs what, four thousand dollars or whatever it is, right. but you divide the cost of the shotgun by the number of rounds you're going to shoot through it, and it's going to be the cheapest gun you ever own. And it's like, that's true, but man, that, that entry level guy, he's not ready to hear that yet. And you know, that's, God, that's a freaking amazing point. We got to give Travis some props on that one. But the, the, uh, the Dave of 2011, 2012, that was shooting all that gear that I just mentioned was not ready to hear that. Yeah. And, and the Adam Maxwell of 2012 was not ready to hear that either. Yeah. Yeah. Huh, interesting. So when um when we had Bill Corker sit with a six thousand dollar pistol on my desk. <laughs> we'll get to that bad boy in a minute. <laughs> let's let's hear it one more time though. Oh, you wanna you wanna you wanna get some up? Oh yeah. There oh my is. goodness. Wait, All right. wait for it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so we were talking to Bill Corcoran about uh shooting um heavy division recently when when uh we were at vortex shooter source three gun we just uh um played that one a couple of weeks ago on the uh, on the podcast but it you know it got me thinking about uh division hunting and uh that was the second conversation of the weekend as far as division hunting goes like on the on the way down uh one of my one of my friends was uh texting me and he was saying like um or he had sent me like a screen capture of a conversation that he was having with someone else who was giving him a hard time for never, never having a title. So, uh, my friend, we'll call him a, 
A was shooting tech ops, and the guy that was giving him a hard time, we'll call him B. B was shooting uh, heavy division. So A's like, hey, look, I'm playing in the most competitive division out there, and you've never played in, in TAC Ops, so you know you can take all your titles and the, the 10 different people that shoot there that each have 20 years on you and go pound sand. You know, that was that was the thing. In it. But it got me thinking about that division uh, jumping thing. And then the conversation that we had with Bill about um, like how much he enjoys heavy division. It's like, well, maybe it's not just trophy hunting. Maybe there's some fun to be had here. So I got to thinking about the the matches that I'm going to shoot uh, coming up here and like maybe playing in different divisions. And so one thing that you've said in the past is that there's certain matches that lend themselves to being fun for different divisions, right? Absolutely. So I want to talk about the match I have coming up here, but can you give a couple examples of like maybe matches that are um, more fun for different divisions? Um, well, like, um, well, specifically to me, uh, one of the things I was looking to do, like I wanted to shoot a division in heavy metal just to do it. I mean, I'm a big 1911 fan, so I have plenty of them. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I just kind of wanted, you know, I got a 308 this year from PWS. I've been shooting it. Uh, I primarily shoot it to, to test customer scopes, uh, for our range certification program. But, um, um, I was like, yeah, yeah, man, I'd like to shoot this in a match one time, you know, sometime. I don't, I don't want to do a whole season in heavy metal, but it, like, it would be fun to do it one time. And then, you know, so then, like, principal, well, don't do it at a major match. Do it at a local match. Well, all of our local matches have less than 200-yard shots, so that'd be, that'd be about as fun as putting a tournament bass boat into a two-acre pond and fishing for walleye or, uh, you know, sunfish, you know. Like, it's, it's not the same thing, you know. Uh, so I wanted, you know, if you're going to shoot the heavy gun, you kind of want to go someplace that – lends itself to throwing the heavy bullets and um, uh, more of a, you know, a DMR style match. So like for me, that was, that was uh, the shooter source match. I, I kind of had it in the back of my head. Like I, I want to do it. There's only a couple matches on my schedule where it would be fun. And that's one of them. And uh, so I tried to get it together and, and just the logistics of it just didn't work out. I couldn't get the ammo that I needed uh, in the time, the time frame that I was working with. So, um, so I didn't do it, but now, you know, even if that ammo showed up like the next Monday. <laughs> so nice. But but now like there aren't any matches on my schedule that I'm interested in shooting open at or uh, not open um heavy. Like I don't want to shoot heavy at Expedition Multigun. I could definitely shoot heavy at Expedition Multigun, but like that's that's not a match that lends itself to to heavy metal other than if you know if you just want if you just want to get your jollies on, yeah. on shooting the heavy, the heavy gun in a bay, which just isn't the reason that I wanted to do it. But heavy gun in a bay kind of sounds lame because now you're taking one shot on every target. You know, right? It's like right. thump, thump, thump. It's like, nah, I, I don't know. Yep, same thing with um, um, not directly cross compatible, but like you know when I was shooting uh in factory division in three gun nation. It's like they had some stages, you know, the stages were some really hoser stages set up. But here I am in a division that's limited ammo capacity. It's like, man, this stage would be really fun with an open gun or a, with a with a loaded, you know, T, um, practical pistol. Yeah, for sure. But, but like, you know, and, and I shot single stack a lot of years for, for the fun of reloads too, you know. And so, like, I, I still like that part of the game. I don't mean it to be derogatory. But there are times where it's like, man, they really set this match up to go fast. So it would be fun to go fast here if I didn't have, have guns with plugs in them. So, um, you know, there are, there are matches as you go around the country. Um, I know one year, one year at uh, Blue Ridge, Travis Gibson and Mark Roth were talking like, oh, man, this is, an, this is an open shooter's match, man, all the way. You have a bipod here, you're going to have so much fun. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a bipod that year. It was kind of hard. So. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, every match does have its own flavor. And if you're inclined to shoot some of the other divisions, you know, they're, they're, I'm, at least for me, like if I'm not going to commit a whole season to a division, there are definitely some matches that, that lend themselves to, to certain divisions or they're, they're more fun in certain divisions uh, depending on what you're into. Yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of looked around this uh, <clears throat> this year and I thought, well, I want to have some fun, you know, and, and it's not like uh, like Three Guns not fun anymore, but it's uh, I wanted to get like a more or, or a wider breadth of knowledge. So 
kind of set the goal of, of shooting some club matches uh, in different divisions, right? So right. I got uh, a buddy to – pardon me. I got a buddy to uh, commit to loan me uh, a SCAR and um, – a nice 45 because the one I have is is uh, as reliable as you would expect a 1911 to be. What do you and, got, buddy? Uh, it's a. Uh, what do you loan you? <laughs> no, 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 no. The one that he's going to loan me is. Uh, um, yeah, F- talk dirty to me. F- FNP 45. Oh, you blew it. I know. So the the one I have is a uh, Springfield Armory GI model. So it's got like. The, oh, I have that one. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love it, but. Um, I didn't realize. I want to shoot it in three gun. Yeah, that was the first pistol I ever bought, but I didn't realize that uh, guns weren't supposed to malfunction that often until I started shooting a Glock 17. I'm like, oh, look, this thing runs every time I pull the trigger. Anyway, so um, there's that, and then okay, so you got to solve the the pump problem. No big deal there. Um, my friend uh, uh, Kevin Travis, who's the uh, match director of Colorado Three Gun Championship and Soco Three Gun. He just uh, jumped divisions as well to open division, picked up a, a nice X-Rail, which uh, if you've ever shot an X-Rail, it's kicking the pants. It's a, a completely different experience. So he's got he's got that, and he's got an open pistol. And uh, he's like, yeah, man, we, uh, we'll, we'll squat up at a club match sometime. You can shoot it. I'm like, heck yeah. So, and then, of course, there's uh, Limited, which I started in Limited. And, uh, you yes, know. did I. Yeah. So, Limited's pretty easy here in Colorado because once again we don't shoot past 200 yards, so it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, and really, if you're shooting TAC in in Colorado, I mean you might as well be shooting Limited. But uh, I ran a couple uh, club matches in, in Limited uh, so far this year, and it, it's just kind of fun to play in uh, in that type of division where you can't use the crutch of like maybe I'll go one and a half x or two x or something like that on this. You uh, have to rely on that on that one X. So I did that with the Spitfire, and then uh, when I had this this inkling that in the Colorado Three Gun Championship I want to run a new division that's out there, um, I threw the Huey on my uh, on my rifle, and I've been shooting limited division in that and kind of a, a limited asterisk. So do uh, do we want do we want to get into the the match that I'm going to shoot and the division I'm going to shoot here? Should we talk about that? Uh, yeah, before we move on, though, I just want to put the exclamation point on uh, shooting limited made me a, a stronger rifle shooter for sure. It definitely changed. I mean, I only did it for a year and a half after shooting TO seriously, and we can get into that later in the show. But um, <clears throat> but no, like it actually it absolutely changed my perspective. It was like, no, I don't need two power to shoot a plate rack yeah. at 90 yards. I don't. If I have it, maybe I'll use it. It kind of depends how big the plate is, but like I don't need it, and in fact, it might hinder me a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so the different divisions also j- division jumping does give you a little bit of different perspective on the game. Yeah. As well. So. And so there, there's a concept that you and I have talked about in the past on the podcast as well uh, about cross training, and the uh, you brought it up, and you seem to have a pretty good source for this. Do you remember this one? Uh, yes, I, I believe very strongly in cross training. <laughs> And uh, I know exactly where I got it from. Uh, a guy who knows a little bit about the action shooting sports. I think his his na- first name's Jerry. I can't remember yeah. how to spell his last name. Yeah, most but. people mispronounce it. It's Michalek. So yeah, Jerry Michalek has a video on cross training, and uh, it, you know you brought up the topic, and I, I that was kind of like my first uh, um, exposure to it in a number of years because i I watched that video when it first came out but then i just kind of forgot about it right but but um it it got me in that mode of thinking like oh okay and then some some additional conversations that you and i've had and then chatting with uh uh ruben uh alex and the co-worker years of vortex yes sir uh, who's been on the show in the past we've uh we've had that conversation about um shooting limited and how it makes you a better shooter as well so before the Vortex match, I did shoot a club match in a limited with my Spitfire, and, and that kind of um, – I did that on purpose to kind of get back to that feel and maybe not mess with gear so much. And then, of course, uh, since Vortex has – Vortex Shooter Source has uh, targets out to 550 yards, I went ahead and put the Viper back on for that match. But <laughs> – but, uh, Smart play. Thank you. Thank you. But then um, 
yeah, so coming back on the way back, I pretty much decided like, okay, well, I'm going to shoot this uh, this new division here. So, uh, so what do you got going on? So, Colorado Three Gun Championship. So, Kevin Travis uh, is the match director of this match. He is the um, match director of SoCo Three Gun as well, SoCo Shooting Sports. So, it's like a club match here in Southern Colorado, which is basically Colorado Springs. And uh, so he um, looked around and he's like, why are, why am I surrounded by three military bases, possibly four? I, I always lose count. And um, all these law enforcement jurisdictions. And then I have um, just a handful of law enforcement at my, uh, at my range. And Kevin's a uh, firefighter uh, EMT as well. Or firefighter paramedic. Firefighter marksman. Yeah. Or firefighter paramedic. I can't remember which, but. Um, sorry, Kev. So he put together like, uh, oh, well, if, if I had to make rules that would encourage law enforcement and military to come shoot the game, how would they be, you know? And then he took a lot of, um, feedback from people in the three gun talk group. And, uh, over a period of weeks, he came up with a rule set and I didn't actually pay attention to that discussion because I'm of the opinion that if I'm not going to participate in a division, then my opinion doesn't really matter on on what happens there. And that opinion came from the heavy discussion that we have all the time. Whereas, like, guys that actually shoot heavy are totally fine shooting a, a semi-automatic shotgun, a 9mm, and a three hundred eight. Whereas everyone that doesn't actually shoot heavy really wants you to shoot a pump, really wants you to shoot a 10-round, uh, uh, excuse me, 10-round single-stack forty five. And a 308, right? With iron yeah. sights. With iron sights. Yeah. And one arm time behind That's your back. That's not heavy. Yeah, exactly. So it's always those people that don't play in that division. So knowing that, I didn't participate in it. And now that I'm going to participate in it, I read the rules. And uh, I don't like a lot of the rules, but I'm obviously going to play by a lot of the rules. And I'm going to game it as hard as I possibly can. Because that's what I do. Walk (laughs) hard. All right, so that so the division that uh, Kevin created is called Patrol Division, and it's a um, it's a division that's being run at his club matches, and then uh, he's also running it at the Colorado State Championship, which is where I'm going to shoot it. Um, it is okay, so it's basically gear intensive, so almost everything is exactly the same as limited, except everything I'm about to read you. So um, I'll go by by different gun here, and then we can discuss them. So first up is pistol. No double stack, single action only pistols. The most controversial part of this. Uh, next one is really, mo- yeah. We'll get st- stew on that one, buddy. <laughs> Hang on okay. a minute. Uh, the second one is must start hammer forward if DASA. Uh, frame weights are not allowed. Pistol lights must be operational. There's a 15 round magazine limit. You can download them. Otherwise, limited division rules apply. I have one question. <laughs> what? On, the, on, the, on the flashlight, does yeah. that mean you have to have an operational flashlight, or if you have a flashlight, it has to be operational? It does not say, but uh, I take that to mean if you have a pistol light, it must be operational. So what they don't want you to do is... You can't Bob, Bob Vogel your flashlight? Can't Vogel the flashlight, which uh, for those of you at home who wonder what we're talking about, Bob Vogel, uh, badass USPSA, I, IDPA shooter... Um, also law enforcement in his daily life shoots glocks um i think exclusively and he did uh shoot one match maybe more with a like a tlr1 i want to say maybe i'm getting some of the maybe i'm going too detailed here and yeah some so of the, the shit wrong but the he rules fil- and the, the rules and limited allow you to have a weight on your pistol they do not allow you to have a flashlight well flashlights automatically bump you to open so he took a flashlight, a Glock flashlight I think, housing. I, I think you have that backwards, dude. Nope. You can have a weight but not a flashlight? Correct. Correct. I have researched this heavily. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll <laughs> um, let you take over here. Yeah, uh you can have a flash you can have a flashlight in open. You can have a weight in limited. You may not have a flashlight in any division other than open. Can you have a weight in other divisions? Yes. Yes, you can bolt on the biggest, most obnoxious lead sinker of a weight on the front of your pistol you want. It just can't be a flashlight. So Bob took 
uh, the old school pre LED, like the incandescent flashlight, the Glock flashlight, gutted it out, filled it with lead, lead shot, put it on his pistol, because it would then fit in his holster. Yeah. So it's a weight. Oh. It's a weight that fits in my holster. So it shot it. It's basically like he didn't want to get a specific holster for a weight, so he used a flashlight. Right. And you know, I think to any logical person, it made sense. Like, oh yeah, well, I mean, wait, what's the difference? But because the initial flash, you know, the initial form of the weight was a flashlight, some people said, oh, that's a flashlight. You can't do that. It's legal. Bump you to open. I don't know. Maybe they got their butts beat by Bob and they wanted to go up higher on the list. But wait a minute. You said that only open could use a flashlight. That's correct. So it's because the housing was a flashlight initially. Oh, oh. So he was trying to use it as a weight. As a weight in limited, some some other folks were trying to bump him to open because oh, it started life as a flashlight. I got you. So I got the story completely backwards. I, I was under the impression that it was a, uh, yeah, so this is now urban myth. <laughs> so uh, urban legend. Uh, so I was under the impression that he was shooting a division that allowed flashlights but not weights and that he weighted the flashlight to be nefarious. So that was my mistake. Nope. They said it was- my understanding, they said it was a flashlight, or they were trying to say that it was a flashlight and bump into open. However, I I believe, and this is the part that I'm hazy on, I believe he successfully argued that it's just a weight uh, because it's not an operational flashlight, and he got to shoot limited. Yeah, makes sense. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I like to shoot USPSA from time to time with, like, I, I would, um, my single stack gun, I, I, have a, I have a Nighthawk single stack gun that I like to shoot. I like to shoot it with a flashlight on because that's how I carried it when I was uh, in retail and um, because I worked the night shift. Um, so, um, But I'd have to take it off to shoot USPSA technically or be bumped to open with uh, with an eight-shot single stack gun. So, But, yeah, so, but when I heard, getting back on track here, when I heard the, the rule about the flashlight and it had to be an operational flashlight, I was like, oh, so does so does everybody have to have a flashlight now? Because no. that would be cool. So yeah, but I, th- I, I think could also what, see it being restrictive. I think what the uh, deal is here is they want you, if you are law enforcement, they want you to show uh, feel comfortable showing up with your duty gear. So if you normally carry, for example, a Glock 17 with a flashlight on it, they want you to show up with that Glock 17 with the flashlight on it and quote-unquote train like you fight kind of thing right yep and not so, fill it with weight right however if you carry a double stack single action only pistol you are not welcome at this match in this division <laughs> yeah so that's no soup for you yeah so that's the the biggest sticking point i have there and uh i actually just put up a uh a couple of days ago, put up a thread on the uh, the Three Gun Talk forum about, hey, um, looking to shoot this this division, which pistol should I buy? And uh, my my choices were a uh, Glock 22, like a used used 40 caliber Glock 22, right? Because it's it's what um, it's what police carry here in Colorado. It's 15 round capacity, and it meets the intent of the rules. And on and the you other, you can get them so cheap. <laughs> yeah, you can get them used for like three hundred fifty bucks. But uh, on the other end, I had the CZ SP01 Accu Shadow, which is a you know twenty eight hundred dollar pistol or something like that, um, or or whatever. I don't know. I didn't really look t- too hard. But it's 18. a it's a double action, single action. It is a full race gun by a race shop of CZ. Right. It's it's done by like CZ Race something rather i don't know again i, I don't have it up uh, pulled up in front of me here but it's easy it, custom for the easy custom thank you so it it is a a custom race gun right and it's like how are these two allowed in the same division like that doesn't those two are diametrically opposed it doesn't make any sort of sense to me if you don't allow this cz race gun in or excuse me if you allow this cz race gun in but you don't allow like a stock sti double stack nine millimeter how how does how is that congruent in your head, you know? So I was pointing out the uh, the uh, oddity there, but the I think the the reason that double action single action are in there is that you know they don't want to um, discourage the seven police officers in the world that are still using Sig P two twenty sixes or whatever they are. 
um, you know, double action, single action uh, pistols. So, yep. Um, in my mind, this would have been better if they just said striker fire. But I guess we're not really here to argue the rules. We're here to figure out how we can game the rules. So, right. So, and there's your first answer. <laughs> is to buy that CZ. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So that that unfortunately does not fit the uh, the three gun show budget unless uh, someone wants to uh, ship me one here. But um, in which uh, patrons. Yeah, exactly. In which case, we will provide an address for you. Um, anyhow, the uh, so I'm going to be shooting my Glock 34. Um, the downloading to 15 round magazine limit. Um, if I again, I wasn't around for the original part of this because I I didn't I wasn't going to shoot the the division. But I'm guessing that is like a uh, you know bring your duty gear. And again, the Glock 22 is is the um, basically the the most popular duty pistol out there and uh by the way i keep saying duty and it makes me want to laugh (laughs) (laughs) thanks adam uh anyway so i think 15 round capacity on that is a reason that that's there um you can't say that it's a colorado restriction you know that's our our magazine restriction on on magazines here in colorado because uh, law enforcement has an exemption, so that doesn't make any sort of sense. But anyway, 15 round magazine. Um, other limited division rules apply, so I can do, so I can do mag well. I have my frame stippled. I have all the slide cuts and everything. Um, you know, several hundred dollars into a trigger. Base pads are fine. Just 15 round capacity. I think that's just leveling the playing field across platforms. Um, as it, as it was initially, when they originally started with uh, the 10 round restrictions in USPSA and actually IDPA did it first, it was it was more so because if if your department is issued a Beretta 92, but my department's issued a Glock 17, you know there's a there's an advantage to me having a full magazine over you. So they kind of want to level the playing field across pistols, and I think 15 is closer to a full capacity without giving the nod to a specific manufacturer who can yeah. fit you know, a couple more rounds yeah. in there. And, and the I agree pistol. on that. So I, don't get, I guess I don't get too bent out of shape about that particular rule. USPSA production also happened during the uh, the assault weapons ban, so don't forget that. So there was the 10-round capacity limit. I, I want to say it was, it was countrywide. I don't know. I, I wasn't really a, a big gun owner back then, but... I don't so, know if it. I don't know if it was. Uh, I know. I know. IDPA was during the Clinton ban. Yeah. And I know production division was a direct reaction to IDPA stealing membership from or you know attracting membership away from USPSA. Yep. Um. So they kind of made their diver- their version of it. Um. Boom. There so, you go. Um, All right. But, so uh, yeah. the uh, I um I do like the fact that the fifteen round magazine uh limit does differentiate this from limited and tech ops. So it can't be something silly where it's like, Oh, I'm just going to bring my, you know, my SIG P320 that, um, that I carry on duty. And then, uh, I'm going to add a base pad to it and now I'll have 24 rounds. So I, I, I do like that part of it, that it actually makes it a different pistol division. I also like that you have enough magazine, like you have you have a level playing field with the restricted magazine capacity, but you still have enough magazine capacity that you don't have to have eight magazines to get through yeah. a stage. Because yeah. that's a big that's a big pitfall to action shooting too. You know, you tell somebody that they need four or five mags, and they'll be like, "Well, can I get by with two? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or and, you know, it's like, I, no, I don't. You, you I, need more. You need more magazines. I don't so, get that. It. Like, ah, uh, oh god, that's a whole that's a whole nother trail. Yeah, but okay. I mean, so, but uh, you know, it has enough capacity. My point being that it's enough capacity that you don't need a million and seven magazines. Uh, you know, to Kevin's credit, a law enforcement officer can show up with the number of magazines that they have for their job, and and get yeah. through the course of fire uh, without needing supplemental equipment. So yeah, that's a very good point. And the uh, um. We'll get to it in a minute here, but I did shoot a club match using uh, the the rifle and the pistol setup that I'm going to be using for this match because uh, I don't I didn't have a appropriate pump shotgun, but um, 
I, I found that I didn't really miss the capacity, which means we're usually dumping pistol mags with seven rounds left in them, you know? So. <laughs> <laughs> Was that an evil or laugh? Or more in open. Or more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right. So uh, moving on to the rifle. So rifle is AR-15 pattern rifle. Uh, yeah. I'm guessing because this is America. Um, like what if we issue Kalashnikovs or maybe Yeah, 14s? right. Well, and I I, I want to say that I heard some, some chatter about that, but no one could actually point to uh, a department or raise their hand saying I was issued a Kalashnikov. So they, they nixed that one. So uh, yeah. AR-15 pattern rifle. Um, next one is fixed magnification optics or iron sights allowed. Next one is if magnifier is used on a red dot, it has to be a fixed in magnified position for duration of the match. Next one. Oh. Yeah. Next one is 30 round magazine maximum. Base pads allowed if they do not add any capacity. Next one is offset irons are not allowed. Backup irons or co-witnessed are. And then the final what? one. Yeah. The final one is otherwise limited division rules apply. So... Adam, what's your thoughts on that? You know, there there are some interesting rule choices there. I um, for the most part, I actually like I like them for the spirit of the division. Um, because uh, like the iron sight one would be a good one. Like, well, what if I have offset iron sights? You know, and that's true. But if they allow them now, you know, in a division where we're trying to somewhat put some guardrails around gaming if you have a fixed power optic like a trigicon and you have flip up iron sights so you have 1x and you have 3 4x i mean that's a competitive advantage and then pretty much at a at a championship level you pretty much got to have offset iron sights yeah and um, that, whereas, initially that's exactly what i thought is i would get one of those uh 3x spitfires right or is it yeah, a, or is yeah. it a strike fire is it Spitfire? Spitfire. You're, you're correct on Spitfire, yeah. Okay, so 3X Spitfire and then do offset iron. So that was my initial goal, and then when I looked at this, I was I was pissed off because I couldn't game it like because I, I thought I was all cool, like I had a cool idea, and then he's like, no, Dave, we thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know I, uh, backup irons or co-witnessed are allowed, I think is dumb. Like just, just the fact that there are flip-up irons – in the same plane as your scope are dumb. So I don't know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm of that. Like, uh, <sighs> basically, I mean, I guess I, I don't have a problem with that one. Cause basically he's saying, yeah, you can have them. You're not really, if you use them, you're not really getting an advantage, but you don't yeah. have to take off, you know, the equipment that your department requires you to have. And that's pretty commonplace in that, in that world that they're required to have backup iron sights because that, that uh, mentality is definitely definitely alive and well there. So I guess I, I don't I don't get too bent on shape about that one. Yeah, I just think the whole concept of flip up backup irons are dumb. But again, that's another rabbit. Oh, trail. they are. Oh, they are. <laughs> no, don't get it. Don't get it twisted. They are. <laughs> but but uh, that uh, that wheel of change turns very slow. So. Yeah, I do like the uh, the fixed magnification uh, optic or iron sights um, is cool. Uh, you know, fixed magnification can be like a one X. Like uh, like a Spitfire, like the new Crossfire, um, those uh, those type of optics. Uh, I I'm choosing to go with the uh, the Huey because it's uh, it's new, and uh, yeah. for for another reason that I've told you about offline that we'll get to in a minute here, and then uh, well, and I also like that that like the fixed four power you know ACOG style yeah. sights are legal too, and that's what because... I was going to say too because there there are army bases nearby. And if they have like a duty weapon with um, like an issued ACOG or something like that, then they can still come and play. Well, yeah, and I think the challenge that they have um, having a having magnification at close range is probably offset by the challenge of people not having magnification at intermediate distance. Whether it's real or or equal or not, well, that's something else. But at least like it's not like it's not like you have to have a fixed four power optic to be competitive because it's not like because because that guy you know he has his challenges too using that optic so it's kind of like it's kind of like there's no good choice yeah there's only yeah 
there's only there's only varying levels of hmm mm-hmm. that, you know on on what you're gonna put on top there. So yeah, so I kind of like that one. I do too. I'm pretty excited about that. So the uh, um, the other th- okay. So let me th- let me throw another if out there. So um, they they being the uh, the range that this is at, they were planning to build a 600 yard berm. And it was supposed to be in, done in time for the uh, championship. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Um, so I think we're limited to like 200, which makes this, you know, Huey only. However, if this was a a stage where you have, or excuse me, excuse me, a match where you have seven stages of of hoser out to 75 or 80, whatever it is. And then one stage that has long, long range, then I would employ backup iron sights. I, w- I would, I would zero the uh, the backup irons for whatever distance that we're doing that we're doing. You know, and and then I can yeah. understand like, okay, well now this comes into 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 play, and that's sufficiently gamer enough to make my my heart happy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, however, as, as it is just, you know, just one optic, I'm going with the Huey and, uh, we're going to shoot out to 200 yards. So it shouldn't be a big time. Uh, 30 round magazine capacity maximum. I like that. I mean, it's a good standard. Um, if you're, if you're going to go that route, um, yeah, I mean, you, you get, you work the rifle skills, you got some decent capacity. It's the most common that people are going to have. Uh, it's most common that people are going to be able to draw, you know, out of their out of their equipment lockers. So yep. it's pretty pretty logical choice uh, yep. if you're trying to trying to nip the arms race in the butt there because def- the floodgate is definitely open for all the accessories as we can see in tech optics of what you can what you could do for magazines on the rifles. Yeah, exactly. Well, and let me bring up one of my favorite arguments. Uh, so I asked a question on the uh, the Facebook the other day. Um, I read this a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Uh, should the D60 be legal in TAC Ops? And then uh, you get the the idiots that didn't actually read the question or don't have a reading comprehension or are just being uh, obtuse. And they're like, well, if the Surefire is legal, the D60 should be legal. It's like, no, 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 no. That wasn't the question. That wasn't the uh, can you think of seven other reasons that this should be legal. It was... Should this be legal? That is the question. Should it be legal? We'll attack the surefire in a minute here, but let's deal with this. And uh, I think once you start um, going down that road, like you say, there there are floodgates. So limiting it to 30-round uh, magazine maximum I think is good. Uh, I'm guessing Kevin's going to get uh, people that are like, well, hey, what about my Daniel Defense 32-rounders? And let me save you the time. No, it is not legal. 30 <laughs> so I, I kind of like this though because uh you know i shot for the first time with actual 30 round p mags um in a in a club match and uh i'd be surprised i didn't didn't really miss the uh the extra 15 rounds or 30 rounds uh when i'm running my d60 so um i did uh, late late breaking news okay uh mike whiteside just sent me a picture of my vepper barrel on Facebook. Oh my so, God! Why back are, to regularly scheduled programming. Why are you on Facebook during the podcast? Hey man, I'm contenting. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's exciting. Let's get to that in a minute here. But uh, back to you. Uh, <laughs> were you listening about the magazines? The, uh, yeah, I was listening to the magazines, and I actually had a question for you. Sure. Um, could you could you read the rule on the magazine again? Ooh, I, I think I know where you're going with this. I like where your head's at. 30 round magazine capa- or excuse me 30 round magazine maximum base pads allowed if they do not add any capacity Are you ready for this Hartman? I am dude and I think I already know where you're going. What about them MBX bases with the duck wings? Oh, that is not where I thought you were going. Um as long as they don't add capacity. I think those add capacity though. Do they? Yeah, I think they're plus 5s. I never actually forked out the coin for one, so I've seen them in real life, and I really think they add five. But you can use so touche. Yeah, so I I texted Kevin the other day when I was heading to a match, 
and uh, I was like, hey, you don't say can't use couplers. Can I use couplers? And then uh, a few hours later, I got a text back. Uh, it's not, it's not, not in the rules, gamer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I totally, uh, t- totally gave it away here. If you're shooting uh, patrol division at Colorado Three Gun Championship, couplers uh, are allowed because it's not, not allowed. So, um, show me the rule, homie. Exactly. So I think that pretty much wraps it up there. I'm going to be doing uh, couplers if I need to go prone, or couplers on you know barricades or something like that. But other than that, I'll just be doing. Uh, uh, 30 round P max. So yeah. All right. So here's the fun one. And, uh, this is somewhat controversial as well. Shotgun pump action, 12 gauges only eight round tube max plugs. Okay. In extended tubes, no detachable magazines, Local match will allow them for 2018 season only so as to evaluate how the advantages and disadvantages play out versus eight-round tube guns. Maxed at eight rounds still. Well, I already know the advantages there, but uh, last one is other uh, limited division rules apply. So pump shotgun, eight-round max. My question is like, (laughs) you know, uh, how many police departments still issue shotguns? I see them all the time. Do you? Yeah. And generally the way I the way I see them now is uh next to a carbine. So, it's it's yeah. not it's not like they took away the shotgun, it's just they added a carbine. And and I don't know I'm I'm not saying like I go out and operate or shit like that, but I just like look in police cars as I walk by. So, I go on ride alongs. Yeah. So do you see shotguns? Uh, I don't. That's why in, in my in my local community, a couple of my friends who I, I rode around with, uh, Saz41 and um, uh, Trevor, um, who I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to say his last name. I don't know if he's cool with that. Right, Trevor. Um, but, <clears throat> but um, yeah, no, they just have carbines. And uh, my local city that I grew up in, they were only issued, you know, they removed shotguns and they just had MP5s. And the MP5s evolved into M4s, so um, that's kind of an evolving challenge of of that division too. Is like I think the shotgun's kind of going away as a as a lead propulsion device. I mean, they they probably still keep them around for bean bags and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I'm but I'm also guilty of being ignorant. So if if uh, if any of the LE guys are out there like screaming at their <laughs> at their iPhone right now, <laughs> like like calm down, all right? But that's just my perception of of my very narrow perspective of the law enforcement community is they're, they're largely moving away from shotguns. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because I, I know that at some level the Beretta or not Beretta, Benelli M4 is, is issued. Uh, I know that a lot of military use it. I, I know people personally that have used the M4 overseas uh, the only pump shotguns that I've that I'm aware of that friends have used in uh, in combat were um, breaching, and so they're like AOWs, you know, the little tiny guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, but I don't know that other than than the M4 and in very limited capacity, are other semi-automatics uh, issued. Uh, I think the M3 is out there. What is the M3? Um, I'm not familiar with that. The M3 is a variant of the Benelli that is uh, pump and semi-auto. No. So it uh, it was based off of it was based off of the the, uh, the M1 Super 90, and then they made it so that you could pump it as well. So you had a semi-auto shotgun, but if you're going to use uh, less lethal shells that oh. generally don't have enough gas. You could hand shock the the gun and operate it that way, so you could shoot both. Oh man, that's interesting. Um, it was not it was not terribly popular commercially, but I do believe that they are out there uh, in uh, in government or you know agency lockers. Right. Um. So. So in you know in in that case, you're going to be other than that, you're going to be looking at uh, pump action. Right. Right. 
but, but yeah, I mean, Remington eight seventies, Mossberg five hundreds. Yeah, for the most part, Remington Remington eight seventy and Mossberg five hundred five ninety pretty much own that market segment. So yeah, there's probably there's probably a few Winchester thirteen hundreds out there, but not enough for Winchester to keep making it. So, um, um, yeah, it's pretty much it's pretty much a Remington Mossberg world out there. It's kind of it's kind of like how. Uh, how the uh, the red dot world is pretty much like Aimpoint versus EOTech, and you know Mavericks like us over here at Vortex are trying to change that. But like right oh, now, wow. they're pretty they're pretty much they're pretty much out there, and and so it would take a lot for a company to challenge uh, the the Remington Mossberg dominance of that that particular market segment. So, mm-hmm. so I question the um, the eight round capacity. Then why? You know, and I, w- I would think that'd be a nod to, well, if you have your heavy gear, you can come out and play because most most heavy is limited to eight round, right? But if you're gonna go buy a uh, eight seventy Express Tactical right now, you've got six plus one, right? Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and then there's the eight seventy Special Purpose Marine Magnum, six plus one, six plus one. Six plus one. Everything's six plus one. So so I think that um, it being eight round is like, uh, hey, if you normally shoot heavy division or if you have a heavy gun at home or if you want to borrow a heavy gun, a uh, heavy division gun, then, um, then yeah, you've, you've got your eight round tube there. Yeah, certainly certainly exceptions to, to that one, but like, I, I see it as a pretty logical bar. I totally uh, do, too. Yeah. I totally do, too. Um, so... So I called up uh, Jeff at uh, Brady USA, and I was like, hey, how's it going? Uh, Do you guys make a pump shotgun? All right, we're back again with Christy Hiring of Aguila Ammunition. And Christy, you've got a a big match coming up with the Aguila Cup, uh, June 14th to the 17th in Decatur, Texas. Tell us what the, uh, the types of shooting that we can expect when we're out there. Yeah, so we're gonna have sporting clays, um, out there in a few different categories. We're going to have the CZ USA main event. We're going to have the Blazer 5 stand, and then we're going to have Fee Task. In addition, we're going to have the Tandem Cross Rimfire Challenge, and then we'll have the Lucas Oil 3-Gun Challenge. Um, and then within those events, if you really want to see what a strong shooter you are and if you can cross platforms, and we have the Brownells Triple Threat Award, and you can become eligible by shooting in the 5 stand, the Rimfire, and the 3-Gun categories. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Now, most of my listeners are three gunners, and we like to think that we're the uh, the most well rounded of shooters. So it'd be interesting to see who comes out on top in that one. Yeah, it really will, and I'm I'm really excited because some of the Team Aguila pro shooters, you know, I wanted everybody to participate in everything and on their own. These guys and and ladies, like, yeah, we're doing the triple threat. It's going to be fun to try something new. Um, so I've got sporting clay shooters that are, have never shot three gun before. I've got three gunners that have never shot sporting clays before. You know, same with rimfire. So I, I'm excited to see them excited to try something new. Well, very cool. So this is uh, June 14th through the 17th in Decatur, Texas. If you're interested in checking it out, it's shootagulacup.com. That's A-G-U-I-L-A. Thanks, Christy. Thank you. So I called up uh, Jeff at uh, Brady USA, and I was like, hey, how's it going? Um, Do you guys make a pump shotgun? What do you think the answer was on that one? I want to. I want to say no. Yeah, it's like asking for a Ferrari these days in a manual transmission. Basically, you get the the paddles, the illusion of of uh, shifting yourself, right? So no is the answer on that one. So unfortunately, <laughs> so they just take the inertia spring out so you can pretend to pump it yourself. Oh, there you go. That's a good one. So, <laughs> um, so no, they don't make a uh, a pump shotgun. Um. So I kind of looked around and I was talking to uh, my buddy Mike about borrowing his gun because he normally shoots heavy, but then uh, it looks like he wants to shoot this division as well, which is kind of cool um, just because I'm getting excited about it. He seems to be getting excited about it. So looking at other options out there, uh, Arms and Arms had like a used uh, Benelli Nova with a 10-round tube on there, and I was like, oh, hey, oh, yeah. you're my Huckleberry. Uh, but they hey, sold, girl, hey. Yeah, they sold it real fast. 
So missed out on that one. Um, looking at the schedule I have, I need to make a decision quick. So I think that I'm going to go with the uh, Stoger P3000. Really? Are you familiar with the Stoger P3000? Um, vaguely. So um, I, I had heard like, okay, well, this is very similar to the M3000. And if you look at the, um, by the way, price point, like buying over the counter is like 250. So it makes it pretty cheap if you, you know, are just dabbling for something, right? So, um, the, from the reading I've done, the barrels transfer over. If you look at the receiver side by side, which I went to Cabela's and I was looking at them side by side, they're almost exactly the same. Almost. They look very, very similar. The inertia system of, the Stoger M3000, which I shot last season, uh, is under the grip. It's in the front. So if you carry that forward and you think like, oh, I could just operate this manually with my hand, then that's probably where Stoger went with that one. So I'm going to, I'm excited to uh, get that shotgun and then uh, take it apart next to my M3000 and see like what kind of crossover stuff there are. But uh, basically I'm going to get that shotgun in and uh, massacre the, the port with a, uh, a hacksaw on a file and uh, see what I come <laughs> up with. <laughs> and I'm going to uh, take a... Uh, so I I think the the Breda and the uh, M3000 nut are the same. And if so, I'm just going to take the uh, the tube from my Breda, which will give me 12-round capacity and plug it four rounds, which might be asking for trouble, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're you're silent you must have some thoughts on this on the on the shotgun yeah i mean i would have gone remington man remington no yeah so f- yeah. let me let me tell you all the reasons why you can't go remington please so, <laughs> so uh remington has this this really bad short stroking problem and um and that's on the old guns. And the new guns are are just shit. You know, and it's it's all across the board. Like, every Remington that's come out ever since they got bought by Cerberus has gotten progressively worse. Really? Yeah. So, honestly, would not be able to, uh, to say I got a Remington. That said, in the future, if you hear me hawking Remingtons, I got a big check from them. And uh, that's the only reason. Yeah, in the in the spirit of the division, I'd probably go Remington. Uh, at the end of the day, if I were spending money, I would I would probably buy a Nova. Yeah, yeah, th- I think a Nova would be good. It's about double the cost, though. Right. Um, I would spend it though. If I if I <laughs> if I were, if, I were, if I were going to invest in a pump shotgun, I I would invest in in the Benelli. It's uh, it's the answer, I think, for uh, for what we're doing. You know, I, I think you're right. Uh, traditionally, the P3000 is is new-ish, right? Uh, it's very much like the uh, the M3000 that I shot last year. So I'm going to try it out, and I'll let you know how it goes. And I like to do uh, new shit like that, and then I, I really you like... You do? I do, yeah. And then, uh, again, it's, it's inexpensive. So for a gun that I'm going to shoot probably in two to three matches a year, I'm okay yeah, with it. Hey- Hey man, if if you just followed the herd and and bought the safe gun, I mean that that wouldn't be a very good after action show. So <laughs> I know, and and it's kind of funny because that's like how we started this podcast too, was uh, trying to save each other from <laughs> uh, <laughs> from mistakes. So uh, so this will be perfect. So listeners, let us go make some mistakes for you, and we will yeah. we'll tell you about them. So I will report back. Um, all right, so. Uh, the last part, so that's pretty much the uh, the guns here. I want to read this last part to you, and then uh, um, Adam, I want to I want to hear if you have any additional thoughts on uh, on how I can game this to my advantage. So the uh, the next part is called intent, and it says the goal of this is to not be stupid restrictive, uh, but to still have a completely different division than limited, still be encouraging to new shooters, and be a place for military and police to exercise their duty gear as well as uh, new shooters who have defensive gear at home. I've been asked why no double stack gear as well as new shooters who have, well, wait, oops, sorry. I've been asked by, uh, uh, I've been asked why no double stack SAOs. The only common double stack SAO are race guns, not true, 
they uh, have been eliminated to allow a more competitive division for defensive slash duty gear. Uh, strongly disagree. Uh, side note, I understand that some double action pistols do not allow safeties to be on in double action. Guns can be download, uh, downed in either uh, SA or DA. All safeties must be on that can be placed on in the condition without modifying modification of the internal or excuse me, intended safety function of the manufacturer. If a gun doesn't have a safety because it is intended by the manufacturer to be decocked as a safety, then the gun must be decocked. No pistol in single action is allowed uh, to be without safety engaged when down, no exceptions. So I think that is for folks that uh, carry 1911s, that last little statement there. So, which <laughs> a 1911 in this division would put you at a severe disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, it would. Um, and I guess on that, like, I um, I mean, I really like single action guns. So you know, I mean, I uh, I'm like, oh, my stuff's not legal there. But I think this is kind of along the lines of um the uh, the division rules episode that we had so long ago, or right. not that long ago, but it was it was a while ago in podcast land. <laughs> yeah. Um, like like people who uh, who want a carry optics legal to division. Yeah. It's like, well, it's like, well, no. I mean, like, yeah, if you have that gun, there's a place for that. It's an open. So, like, you know, I mean, they're trying to make this division that, for the most part, has encompassed uh, 80, if not 90 percent of the equipment that is currently in common usage in in law enforcement and military. Um, are are some departments issued gear going to be affected by this? Probably. Yeah. You know, but like they're trying to encompass the vast majority of it without without the the arms race, you know, it's, and you know, the only people who are asking that question about using a single action double stack gun are gamers. Yeah. So <laughs> like yeah, you know. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, and we have a division for them. It's called Tech Optics. Yeah. yeah. Or or so, limited like, yeah. or even you limited, know, you know. And I mean, if you know, you've come this far that you're willing to shoot um patrol division and that's the equipment you have like you've already you've already got all the necessary tools you need to just go shoot to instead yeah everyone's still going to be nice to you yep you know and you know if you've got a, a double stack uh you know 2011 shooting to with your pump shotgun isn't going to be that big of a deal right yeah so um but on you know Buying the two thousand dollar Accu Shadow tube does seem like a cool idea. Uh, it is, and you'll <laughs> you'll win the match and probably get a lot of your money back out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sure I would uh, absolutely love that gun and have a great time too. But yeah, so I'm uh, I'm just gonna stick with my my uh, my Glock thirty four and complain about it because that's what I do best. Or, or I'll send you my Hudson uh, as soon as I get it back. <laughs> Your Hudson. Yes. My, Hudson, my Hudson had had to go back to the mothership. Oh, already? Yeah, I broke it. Nice. All right. Well, then, no, I don't want to borrow your Hudson. Um, oh, but it's going to be all fixed when it comes back. Yeah, I've heard that one. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what I'm doing uh, this year. I guess the, the big thing I'm doing this year, like I said, I'm going to play in some other uh, divisions for funsies and uh to test out uh gear and stuff like that um yeah so you're in the in patrol division are there any belt restrictions nope you heard all the restrictions gotcha all right and there's you know it's kind of funny because like in the initial discussion and right about the time i bailed out was when uh people were saying or were trying to limit the method that people use to load their uh, shotgun. They were trying to say like, "Oh, use weekend or sing- oh, load single," and I'm like, "Okay, all right. Well, why don't you just say that they have to shoot their pistols one handed, like the, uh, you know, the old cop cop and robber movies? You know, like, I mean, that that to me is so ridiculously restrictive, and you know, bringing it up for discussions one thing, but like standing your ground on that." means you're an idiot i'm sorry you're an idiot no wait i'm not sorry you're an idiot if you said that and you actually well, stand behind that 
Well, yeah, and you're making it hard to the point where it's not going to be fun. It's yeah. already hard enough to attract this audience. It's not, it's not, you know, being able to quad load or not quad load is not the issue. Yeah, uh, and the, the as fast as you can learn to quad load and, you know, as relatively inexpensive as the gear is, maybe we can teach some departments something interesting that they, they, they might use, you know? And no, I don't see them rolling into a... Uh, you know, um, Dunkin' Donuts with a uh, big chest rig on. There's a little shout out to Joe, by the way. Um, hey, hey, Joe loves donuts. Uh, but you know, maybe that's something that they can use in in, uh, in another arena. So the uh, well, and there's there's lots of prominent names in our sport that do just that behind closed doors. They, you know, they go they go and they teach classes to. Dudes that work for three-letter agencies and yeah. dudes with badges. Um, they don't go there to be tactical. They Those groups invite them because they know how to shoot fast. Yep. So they go and teach them how to shoot fast, and then those guys are professionals in the tactical world. They can figure out how to make it tactical, but you know they, they are borrowing the knowledge that has been developed in this game that is specifically, uh, you know, precision at a rapid pace uh you know or how how to how to score points with guns in less time uh they're taking that skill set and they're applying it to what they do uh not using the excuse of being tactical um yeah. and you know i've talked to a lot of uh a lot of guys uh both related to the show and not that you know you would think would be the first ones to scoff at competition shooting is being a uh, bullet golf or whatever they call it and uh you know having those folks recognize the the value that that is uh, co- uh competitive shooting so yeah like i can i can definitely think of at least four names you've had on the show that do that yeah uh for a fact but i don't i don't want to say their names because i'm not sure how cool they are with that sure and but. we don't we don't need to do that but you know we all know those people that um that our law enforcement come out and play with us and, uh, you know, like Joe even mentioned on the podcast uh, when he was on, is he has difficulty getting his coworkers out there. This is Joe Farewell we're talking about, who's a uh, yeah. police officer in Florida. He has difficulty getting his, his uh, um, coworkers to come out. So if you can come out, run your duty gear, and maybe learn something new like quad loading or loading two, I think you're going to be at a advantage. And you're also going to have a ton of fun. So... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm attacking this from a gamer perspective. How can I game something that's intended not to be gamed? But, uh, I do understand the, uh, intent of the division and respect that. And I'm looking forward to, uh, to, uh, to shooting it. Should be a good time. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. So I'm glad to see, see how it turns out for you. Yeah. And so I want to turn to, to uh, open division real quick here, but um, I do want to talk about one thing real quick. So, and that is the uh, the trophy hunting that we alluded to earlier. Yes. All right. So, when uh, when you and I have talked in the past, the Three Gun Nation Pro Series, um, you shot with the the Razor AMG UH1 Huey, and one of the reasons that you did so is that uh, it was the new hotness. And no one had a division title with it yet. That is true. Right? So, uh, knowing that, and knowing that you didn't make that happen, sadly, before you jumped into (laughs) open, is one of the reasons that I'm going to go shoot uh, patrol division, and one of the reasons that I strapped that Razor AMG UH-1 Huey on top of my my rifle is, I'm going to carry the torch for you, buddy. You're going to win that special prize. I am. We'll see. So uh, I would like to say that um, I know who my friends are in Colorado because anytime I mention that, they're quick to point out all the people that are going to beat me in the division, to which I say, hey, thanks, buddy. I appreciate your confidence. <laughs> <laughs> maybe see you on the range. Maybe with a little more uh, swear words than that. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it out. We're going to see how it works, man. Yeah, man. And uh, you know if you're uh, if you're not trying, you're, you're probably in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna go out and shoot it, have fun. Uh, at minimum, we're gonna be able to talk about a new division 
after I shoot the match and what my impression of it was and everything, uh, like I said, I did shoot my most recent club match with my pistol magazines downloaded to 15 and my uh, my 30 round PMAGs. Uh, I didn't have a pump at the time, or at least uh, not one appropriate for the game. So I did shoot um, just uh, you know my my semi-auto, and uh, you know just ran that normal normal limited type type rules. I should have plugged it mm-hmm. now that I think about it, but um, but I didn't think of it at the time. So should be uh should be a good time shooting something completely different. It's always a good time when I shot Blue Ridge a couple of years ago and and had to plug my shotgun to eight rounds it presented like a whole new game so i'm looking forward to this yeah you know new division uh dude, there's all kinds of speculation on who's gonna win but until the match is over it's anybody's game and hey dave has a uh1 so <laughs> yeah. he's he's already ahead i honestly so. don't know if the other guy has a uh1 so um the uh if you don't uh my email address is maxwell <laughs> at vortexoptics.com Adam will hook you up, uh, but you know one one of the interesting things is uh, the and I, and I I honestly um, did this research this morning in uh, in anticipation of speaking with you about it because the the thing I've heard so much is oh your uh, your competition is this guy you know he's he's murder with a pump he's gonna he's gonna kill it I'm like okay cool and uh, one of the guys that <laughs> one of my friends is like. He shoots one match a year and he wins the division. Like that's how good he is. And he doesn't even shoot semi-auto. He shoots a pump. And it's like, okay, well, that kind of scares me a little bit because I haven't shot a pump in a long time. But uh, I looked up all the the major matches in all the states around me for the like the last two years, and I didn't see his name at all. So I think half <laughs> I think half the people are like seriously. Like uh, oh yeah, you better watch out for that guy. And half the people are just screwing with me, and I, I can't figure out which half is is the right half. But when I figure out, I will put them on the list, Adam. Yeah, I think. Well, I think you can put them all on the list. I think they're all in that second category. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's I think it's funny though. It's like uh, one of those uh, things. Like I used to have uh, an ex girlfriend that would uh, ask me questions, and then when I would when I would tell her the answer, she'd be like, "Well, how do you know that?" It's like, "Well, I'm I'm smart." first of all and then second like don't ask the question Duh. you know so the uh be like uh oh hey um i'm gonna go shoot this uh this this division over here and i'm gonna have a good time oh well you know you're probably not gonna win oh thanks buddy thanks yeah when I mean, people <laughs> do the same thing to me division i'm going in yeah uh, so look, like oh man you're gonna go oh, you're gonna get your butt kicked over there i was like oh well am i are you sure because that person hasn't shot against me Nice, nice transition, Adam. You are a, uh, a consummate professional. So you are now uh, jumping over to only shoot open. I am. It seemed like a good idea at the time. This is exciting. This is exciting. So uh, we've you know, talked it's about getting it a couple more times. and more exciting all the time. <laughs> so we we did the uh, the breaking open episode with you and Scott, and people seem to love that one. By the way, um, you coined a term, I think, open curious. And it sounds like there is a ton of open curious people in the uh, the Three Gun Show audience and uh, and Three Gun World at large. So you uh, you decided like I'm a little curious, but uh, I'm gonna go try it out and see if I like it. And you you added a, a, a pistol to the stable recently. Yes, uh, actually, I I mean the decision or the the talk on it was back in December, but it just arrived last Friday. And so we're uh, we're learning how to shoot a dot gun now, <laughs> and, and and not uh, a not a traditional open dot gun, right? So yeah, you... I got a Glock thirty four. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe maybe not. You're silly. So <laughs> what you chose? Uh, obviously, a, a twenty eleven pistol. Um, you chose to do it a little bit different. So tell us tell us what you uh, got going there. All right. So basically. I mean, I was I obviously shoot for Atlas Gunworks, a uh, big believer in uh, in their pistols. Um, and I was talking with Adam over the winter, um, kind of like what we we're gonna do for next year. Like, I didn't, uh, to be honest, I didn't even really, I wasn't even really looking for another gun. Like, I was, he's just, you know, we were just talking. Um, I was looking, you know, I like to shoot single stack in the winter as as a cross training tool. Um, and he was launching a single stack line, so I was I was really ec- excited about getting one of those. And but uh, we hemmed and hawed about it, and and realistically, it kind of came back to well, 
hitched my way into an optics company. And there's there's one division where you can shoot exponentially more optics than the other <laughs> yeah. divisions. Well, and and with uh, limited, you're kind of limited. Well, exactly. And um, at the same time, it was kind of like um, there's some other other elements um, professionally out, outside of three gun. Um, you know that that I may or may not get involved with. Um, so it's kind of like, well, I mean, we're going to be showing optics to people. Like we need guns to show optics to people on. And I was like, I have have no interest really in shooting a striker fired gun. And you've with said a dot on top for a long time that you have no interest in shooting open. I absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, or or open class pistols. Right. Um, you know, we uh, we have one here. Um, uh, one of Josh's chaoses is actually here right now for some testing. Uh, so I, I have that one in my possession too, and I've shot it. I went out there and played around with it a little bit. But, uh, you know, and if I were going to buy that type of pistol, it is my favorite of those types of pistols that I've shot. But um, um, it's just like, you know, interest in owning one or interest in uh, doing the work as a sponsored shooter to earn one, you know, I just wasn't quite there. Um, and on, on those, I mean, you're kind of, you're kind of committed on the optic that you can use. Right. I mean that that mount or that you know if we're gonna mill the slide for something you're kind of committed like if you're milled for an RMR you're committed to RMR whether you like RMR or not yeah if you're, if you're milled for a delta point you're stuck you know like you know we get that call all the time people get you know I got I got an RMR cut slide uh, how do I mount my vortex well currently there's there's no adapter to go from RMR footprint to uh, doctor footprint which is what our products are. Um, so you're kind of stuck. And Hang so on. Uh, million dollar idea here. Adapter plate. Well, it's funny you say that, David. <laughs> oh, tell me more. Because <laughs> I was because I was talking with Adam, and I was kind of like, hey, um, his Atlas Gunworks is Adam Nielsen. His name's also Adam. Uh, and I was like, you know, like. What if we could do something like that? Because like I, I would really like to get one of your guns with a dot on it. But like if we come out with something else in a year or two years or five years or whatever it is, if we come out with something like I want to be able to adapt to that. Like so, could we maybe do like a like an adapter plate style gun? Like is that not something? He's like I've actually been thinking about doing exactly something like that. Oh my. And so I was like, "Oh, now we're cooking with gas." <laughs> and uh, so I was like, well, "I was like, well, you know," and, and he's like, "Well, what, what would you do with it?" And I was like, "Well, shoot open," kind of jokingly. Or um, I was like, "I'm probably shoot demos and stuff like that too, and do field testing." Um, if we were to field test optics, we probably wouldn't be able to shoot them at matches because there's other people at matches, and they would come over and look and say, "Hey, what's that?" Right. So um. Um, but so I was like, yeah, you know, this, you know, I'd probably use it for open and whatnot. And, um, but I was like, I wouldn't even want a comp on it. I wouldn't even really want a comp on it probably. Like I would just want the gun that you make with a dot on it that fits in a, in a standard holster. And he's like, well, I got this idea for a gun. He's like, I actually think I was like, I was like, I'm not going to shoot major with it. Like I am, I am not interested in open major. So, like, what would you think about, like, a slide ride, adapter plate style gun, specifically for shooting minor ammo? And he's like, I kind of have an idea for that, too, because he's like, I, I, think, I think the ideal length for this platform to shoot that kind of bullet is actually something less than five inches. Oh, weird. So, he's like, I kind of want to build this thing that's... You know, sub five inches. I will probably put a comp on the end of it, but uh, you know, it'll be like super subtle. And I was like, hey, so if I can have, if I can have a dot gun, you know, a slide ride dot gun, with modularity for different optics. The bottom half is exactly what you make, and it fits in a standard holster. Like I'm game. And he's like, I totally have an idea for that. I'm going to I'm going to whip it up and I'm going to see what you think. And like that was the last we spoke of about it for <laughs> several months. And then uh and then I uh well, we saw some pictures out there on the Instagram 
uh, which made the waiting even harder. <laughs> but but it, it finally showed up just last Friday. Um, but other than those parameters, like that's the only direction or the only input I had on the pistol. And everything else that, that's been seen on that pistol is is uh, is Adam Nielsen's creation. Um uh, based on what he knows of me, he knows what I want to do with it, and then some ideas on he had on how to make guns work. Hmm. Um, like uh, the first thing a few people picked up on is like, hey, no Evo grip? Uh, well, nope, because they currently don't make the Evo grip in anything other than stainless steel. Uh, the grip on this pistol is aluminum. Oh, interesting. Why? Uh, uh, reduced swing weight. So reduce swing weight, and huh. uh, Adam also thought uh, balance-wise. Excuse me, thought balance-wise, the uh, the lighter material grips would add something to the pistol. Excuse me. Um, so so yeah, currently currently um, the Evo grip isn't available in those other materials, and um, uh, so that's what this one showed up with. Now, if given the choice, if you'd ask me, hey, do you want Evo grip or do you want one of these lightweight grips? I would have told him Evo grip because <laughs> Evo grip. Evo Grip's amazing, yeah. but at the same time, like, I, this gun is super comfy, too. <laughs> like, I, I'm not I'm not really, I'm not super bummed that it's not an Evo Grip. This one's still really comfortable, and I like the weight. Like, I mean, he's absolutely right. The balance on this pistol absolutely worked out, hmm. and I um, and, was uh, super stoked to get it to the range. Uh, took it to the range this weekend. And, you know, so now now we're, like, mid-season, right? We're recording this uh, middle to end of April, uh, May. Okay. Yeah, it's so uh, even, May even 23rd by Minnesota to be standards, exact. Yeah, even by Minnesota standards, I mean, we are in the season now. Uh, we've had a couple matches and whatnot. I've had a couple big matches, um, and I have a couple big ones coming up. And uh, so it's like, all right, well, it is time to – and I've been holding back. Like, you know, I have limited practice resources. I've been holding back on some of them until this pistol came because I knew once I got it, like, I'm, I'm going to want to shoot it a lot to try. Yeah. And, you know, so I wasn't going to put a bunch of time into honing limited gun craft. Well, you, you've I said on the I, podcast before that you're emotionally detached from quad loading now. Also, yes. <laughs> also, yes. Still haven't been practicing quad loading, so I'm really hoping that Pepper shows up soon. <laughs> so... This is a, it's an interesting point that we've, we've gotten to here, Adam, is, is, uh, it, it isn't as easy to switch divisions as it might appear to be. Like for, for me, you know, I'm, I don't have to ha get it like a custom pistol build, right? Like I'm going to pick up a, uh, um, M3 or no, what was it again? P3000 at mm -hmm. the, uh, the local, Cabela's and I'm going to hack it to pieces right so that doesn't require anyone else if if you can rely on yourself and procuring things it's not too bad at, at jumping divisions but if you need to rely on like the um, parts manufacturer of not only the custom builder but the people that supply parts to that custom builder then then now we're kind of talking you know it might take some time and yeah. let's throw in the fact that Adam's wrong handed and uh, your Vepper is not only a custom Vepper, but it's a one of a kind custom Vepper. It kind of yeah yeah. So like uh, Dissident Arms, um, I was chatting with uh, Mike and Lan about this at Texas Three Gun, and I was like, "Dudes, Adam's gonna kill me if I don't ask. What's up with the Vepper?" <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they they basically had to design and manufacture one of one left-handed mid-barrel comp for the shorty shotgun that you wanted. Right. And that think, takes time. I think what they said is is if I wanted a left-handed normal length one, it would have, you know, I could have it today. Yep. If I wanted a right-handed shorty, I could have it today. <laughs> if I wanted a left-handed shorty, which I do, that they don't have the parts for. It. Yeah. Well, and, and it's not like they don't have the parts for it. Uh, you're going to have to wait a couple weeks until we get the parts in. It's like, we have to create that part. Yeah. 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 And I'm totally, I'm totally good with that. And, you know, now that they, 
now that they did the the leg work on it to get a mate, like they didn't just make one, they made a few right, of them. Right. So the next couple guys that that call in, they're gonna have that part, and you're welcome. Um, but uh, oh yeah, uh, that reminds me, I, I asked him uh, how many left-handed short barrel or non NFA shorty shotguns have you guys sold? And uh, the answer, one. One. Yeah. So they just wait, guys. And, you know, have have those uh, have those uh, in order order invoices ready. Yeah, operators are standing by for all you uh, all three of you lefties out there. If you want to shoot open, then uh, yeah, get get you some. <laughs> well, I know I know Virgil's left-handed, so I got oh, at least is one he really? hopper. Yeah, that's weird. So okay, sidetrack again because we do that pretty well here. Uh, I was watching one of your Instagram videos and, and uh, it was Virgil shooting your pistol and he was shooting it lefty. And I'm like, why would he do that? Did he do that just to see what it's like to be Adam for a day? Nope. Turns walk out he's a mile in my shoes. Yeah, exactly. Nope, he's, just, he's just broken like me. Weird. I'm sorry, dude. It makes, it makes uh, sharing equipment super easy. Oh, I bet. Like, like all, I, I didn't even understand what all of you out there like shared with each other, but uh, but now I know. <laughs> Like I don't have to bring an extra holster when I travel with Virgil. I just use his. Yeah, it's perfect. All right, so so you've got your pistol. Um, I'm guessing well, not, you just uh, the, added a. Uh, well, you wanted you wanted me to tell the funny story about the pistol. Too. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about this one. Go ahead. Okay, so so you know I'm waiting for my pistol, and um, you know all the all the names of of atlas gunwork you know atlas is greek i believe um you know it's greek mythology they're mm-hmm. all named after greek gods uh so chaos uh nemesis um what are the other one titan and uh for some for some reason one day i had uh, well because no female always, gods i'd like to point out well I, you'd have to take that up with him you have to have him on the show and see what he says about that yeah but, Adam, uh, you're on notice here. We need some equal opportunity goddesses out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, hey, if you if if you call if you call in the 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 voice that's on the other end is going to be Cat, who is a female. So that's a good. Maybe point. she'll maybe she'll maybe she'll get one get one going here. There you go. But uh, but like I have it in my head, like in the back of my head, coming out of last fall, uh, the gladiator. Maximus, because that's like how I picture myself in my head. I'm like <laughs> Russell Crowe. <laughs> I, I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> I don't either. I'm kind of offended. <laughs> I would be too. I can't stop laughing though. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, shit. I'm crying but now. I, I, know, I am so Maximus, funny. and I will have my vengeance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, All right, so, so I got that going I, I, on in my head. I've heard you do the uh, "Are you not entertained?" and then you you likened the uh, the three gun nation shoot off to uh, to Gladiator, right? Because it's basically oh, yeah. just uh, throwing fresh bodies on the uh, on the pile. Oh, it totally is. Um, so yeah, so I had that in my head one day, and I actually have that little dude like taped up on on my desk. No and kidding. I was looking at it one day. Yeah, I had the little picture like, "Are you not entertained?" Yeah. Huh. For uh, for uh, for difficult customers, which we don't have very often, but sometimes we do, and uh, but uh, we love our customers, and that's why we're here. So um, I had that in my head, and uh, one day, just out of the blue, on like a cold February day, I sent Adam a message. It's like, hey, if um, if my pistol like becomes a model, can we call it the Maximus? <laughs> oh, to I love which, it. To, to which I think I really only got an LOL, which I just took as permission. <laughs> <laughs> LOL, that that is affirmative. Uh, all right, we're good to go. So now my goal, listeners, listen up. Here's here's the audience participation part of the programming. My goal, <laughs> my goal is to get as many people calling and emailing, inquiring about Maximus pistols as humanly possible. Oh my God. <laughs> Because because Adam will know exactly who sent them. Oh my God, I love that. <laughs> and now and now he's pretty much committed to calling it the Maximus. Like the train has left the station. Yeah, you, you can't unring that bell. I know, right? Like every, you can call it something else on the website, but everyone's gonna know. Yeah, you know what's what's crazy. So 
if you go to atlasgunworks.com, that there's a phone number right Which on. You should. There's a phone number right on the front. It's 855-940-1911. Oh, 1911. I see what he did there. And well uh, played, sir. There's also uh, an email address. It's uh, Adam at atlasgunworks.com. And so I, I'm guessing that's who you would contact and and ask for a Maximus. You sure could. You sure could. <laughs> Just ask him. Ask him for a bill sheet and a price list, and uh, you know, let the creativity flow. Oh my God, I love that. If you really want to class it up, what you do is you get the titanium grip. Ooh. Yes. Even I don't have a titanium grip, but if you really if you really want to be baller, that's where it's at. All right. So if you wanna if you want to make Adam Maxwell happy, give Adam is it Nielsen? Is that right? Yes, sir. Give Adam Nielsen a uh, a call and ask ask him about the uh, the Maximus eight five five nine four zero nineteen eleven. So that'll be a good time. We'll all we'll all laugh. Let us know how it goes. <laughs> So, so um, if you're like if you're like me, you name your guns. So you basically name this thing Maximus, right? Right. I don't always name my guns, but I think this one stuck. I've only named my my three gun guns. Really? Yeah. So I've got I've got uh, Brittany, I've got Christina, and I forgot what the other one was. It was definitely a a '90s pop star though. <laughs> I can't remember what the other one was. Brittany, Christina. Pink? Oh, no. Pink would, pink would be a good one, though. Shoot, now I need to build a gun and name it Pink. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, Adam, we, uh, we've we covered your uh, your open gear. You just got a picture of your uh, your barrel on the, uh, the interwebs. Late breaking news here. And uh, you're almost to open division. So... Yeah, it's coming. It's coming right down to the wire. And uh, you know, Mike and Lan have a date with Destiny in France. Yeah, uh, that is coming up. So I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that that uh, have it in time before they leave. Um, and uh, they, they've initially said it's going to be ready in time. It's not a big deal if it doesn't, but I would, I would, I really hope it is. Uh, cool. I might, I might actually. I was like, guys, even if, even if I can just shoot it in the white, like I'll send it back. <laughs> Back to you, and you can and you can seracote it later. <laughs> just can I please, please just let me shoot open at Safari Land. That's all I want. <laughs> oh, Safari Land would be a good place to do that. So when you're yeah, talking yeah, about matches wanna... matches that lend themselves to uh, to being fun for different divisions, yes, that'd be a good I, one. I picture Safari Land being very good for uh, or very fun to shoot open at, and I want to shoot those ginormous fireballs out of the Vepper yeah. uh, on the night stages. Ooh. With a flashlight, I want to put a I want to put a surefire flashlight on the Vepper and shoot that thing at night like it is going out of style. It's now we're be, talking, dude. It's gonna be like the noisy cricket. <laughs> I like it. Well, so uh, this brings us to our our last uh, you know reason to jump to uh, jump divisions that we came up with here, and uh, that is to play with the big dogs. So it used to be a couple of years ago, not not too long ago that you would jump to uh, TAC Ops to play with the big dogs because that's where, like, all the sharks were swimming, right? That was the show. But as of recently, it appears that there's a scattering from TAC Ops, and uh, I kind of attribute that to the fact that there's no 3-Gun Nation Pro Series in TAC Ops anymore, to, so now it kind of frees people up to uh, not practice for the big show. They can uh, go play in other divisions. Um, you can express yourself, people. Express yourself. Uh, so, by the way, that one's for you, DJ. DJ loves when I uh, sing on the podcast. Um, <laughs> the uh, God, where was I going with that? Oh, okay. So, and then uh, so so Josh Fraley comes into the scene. He's only shoot open. He's out there just uh, wiping the floor with uh, open people. He somehow coaxed Scott Green into coming and shooting with him. Scott's absolutely on freaking fire and killing it. And you so hot right now, so hot right now. Uh, and then you look out there and you think like, wow, that looks like a ton of fun. Uh, but I will never shoot a dot on my pistol. So then you get a, a dotted pistol and, and now you're going to go play with those boys. Is that kind of, kind of sum it up there? Well, and, uh, I mean, I've, I think I've said this on the show before too. It's like, I, you know, I hitched my wagon to an optics company. Um, so my participation in three gun, uh, 
uh, this season and for the foreseeable future really isn't success based. Vortex doesn't really care if I win or not. Um, uh, we're there to be ambassadors to our customers and um, and to the sport, um, and also to be you know uh, we're maintained here at headquarters to be subject matter experts. So my job is to both reach out to our customers and connect with our customers, but also have an intimate understanding of our products. So the uh, the more I use them, the more understanding I have. Like you know, in the ten minutes that I've been shooting a dot pistol. I already know way more about uh, shooting dot pistols than I knew last week. So, nice. Um, well, and dot, dot, dot pistols, much like Scott Green, are so freaking hot right now that everyone and their brother is putting a dot on a pistol. Right, right. And when I initially ordered this gun or told people this was the gun I was going with, they were all saying, oh, dude, dude, if you're going to shoot open, you got to get the saddle mount. Like, you got to do it. Slide ride's not, not where it's at. Well, well yeah, that's great. Um, but the vast majority of folks that we talk to on the phone who are using our products on pistols, they are using them on slide ride dots. You know, they're using them on Glocks, on Springfields, on Smith & Wessons, on um, uh, Walthers. You know, that those P are the pistols P320s, that... P320s, X5s, right. Canics. Right. right, and you know, and I'm not really willing to spend any of my personal time with or personal money with those pistols, but if I can pair the platform that I want to shoot with with the product that I'm supposed to be knowledgeable about, um, then, you know, that's a win for me. So that's a big part of why I went went to open uh, was was for that reason. And, um, uh, and then if, you know, if you want to practice and get good and win too, well, that, that you know, that does, that does look good as well. Um, um, but my, my priority for going over to open was was uh, was product knowledge uh, and right. being able to spend more time with products, especially the red dots. Um, um, some of that has floated my direction. Um, to, it's kind of a product that I specialize in. You know, everybody kind of has their own niche in in the, the consumer sales team of what the you know, products that they gravitate towards and are, are really knowledgeable about. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can I can talk about binoculars. But I am I am not Mike McDowell knowledgeable on the right. binoculars. And I, I notice that when I watch a lot of the uh, Vortex Optics videos too, because I I do reference those quite a bit when I'm doing stuff. And uh, it's like, oh hey yeah, there's uh, Ryan Mucknern talking about you know long range shooting. That makes sense. Who, in case anyone's still wondering, he is still here, actually working very hard on on uh, calling customers back and helping them troubleshoot their scopes at seven o'clock at night with me. So oh, you're kidding. We're the we're, it's like it's the two of us and the security guard in the building right now. Hey, all right. He also says hey. Oh, um, what's up, buddy? But uh, yeah, so um, so that was the primary reason I went to open. And then you know you get that idea, it's kind of rolling around in your head, and it's like, wow, man, you know, it is kind of fun to shoot fast. You know, and I so, like going fast. Like, yeah, like fast is fun, and then. Then yeah, and, and like the the just the 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 mental snowball of like gearing up to shoot open, like as we got into spring here, I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Like yeah, I'm ready. Like I don't know if it's gonna be fun, but for whatever whatever is gonna happen, like I'm ready to pull the pin on it and see what happens. <laughs> um, so so really excited about it, and then um, um, and then of course you know we're competitive dudes. So so yeah, do I do I want to go into open division and win? Yep, sure do. Um, is it going to be an uphill climb? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I don't think I'm as far off the pace as people might want to think I am. Though. Oh my! So, but you know, it's kind of a small pond down here in southern Wisconsin, so we'll see. But uh, you know, the boys the boys are all training really hard for those for the with the world shotgun championships and right after that is uh is the trigun and uh i'm gonna be there so yeah shooting open we'll, yeah we'll see what happens because oh, because you... typically typically open talent pool uh some very good shooters do shoot open but open talent pool isn't super deep yeah and there's a few guys at the top there's a lot of old guys you can't see anymore uh, not a whole lot in the middle. So hmm. um, inverse bell know, curve. Yeah. 
So it's kind of like you were saying in, in patrol division, like, oh, yeah, this one guy who shoots one match a year and he always wins and blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, but did who was he shooting against, you know? Oh, I didn't even think of that. You know? So, hmm. um, you know, um, now, you know, at Trigun, Josh is going to be there. Josh is certainly a force to be con- be contended with. Um, but Jerry Miklick is going to be there, too. When is, you know? uh, oh, is he really? When is the Trigun? Uh, yeah, I heard that today. Uh, it is the third weekend in June. I believe it's the 22nd-ish. Okay. So coming right off the uh, Trigun is uh, the Jeff Kirkwood Memorial match. Yep. It'll be at uh, Forest Lake Sportsman's Club as well. Are we going to be seeing you shoot open there, too? Uh, I will be. Uh, we we pare down the divisions quite a bit at that one because we're ultimately feeding into a bracket. Right. So I run two divisions at that match. Uh, one of them is Tac Optics. And then uh, last year, last couple of years, we've tried to open up open division because because we had a couple open shooters. That that's like the only equipment they have. It wasn't just Josh. Um, but we had a, we had a couple equip open guys who were like, well, we don't have Tac Optics stuff. So like, how can we play? Um, and so we've opened it, but we never had a whole lot of interest. But then, you know, going into this season, we have, um, uh, UML introducing two by four. Yeah. And not only is there two by four, there is a two by four open division. So there's so, two by four attack and there's two by four open. So are you going to be um, running those at, uh, Jeff Kirkwald? Yeah. The second division at, at Kirkwald is two by four open. Ooh, Exciting. And we already have 17 people signed up for it, so it's, no way. It's, a, it's a legit division. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and you know, if if anybody's dabbled in two by four at all, like PCC pretty much rules the roost there. So yeah. Um, so I don't I don't think even people who don't have open gear, I think they feel confident enough that their PCC is gonna gonna carry them enough, and they want to shoot their PCC. People who, who like PCC really like PCC. <laughs> So, so, all right. So we have two by four division is uh, two by four open is going to be the uh, the the second division. Seventeen people already signed up. What is the the TAC division? Are you just calling that TAC ops? Yep, TAC optics division. Okay. We're running UML rules. UML so, uh, rules. Yeah, it's, uh, it's feeds TAC optics in, and two by four open. Now uh, let's. So I know there are spots open for the match here. So let's briefly tell the uh, the audience w- what it's about. So you're a little bit familiar with this because you were the match director. Um, first day, five stages, right? Yep. First day we run five stages. Uh, just like, like any other match, we're accruing some scores. Um, it's most, uh, by my own definition, it's a Bay match. Um, uh, the first day, well, the second day too. Um, but we run, we run five Bay stages, um, to accrue some points. And then we use those standings to seed everybody into a, you know, a uh, NCAA style bracket. And the second day, all the shooting is uh, uh, head-to-head single elimination uh, shoot-offs. And so, uh, what we do is uh, we shoot every. You know, the first round takes a long time, but we we shoot everybody off in the first round. Everybody who gets knocked out in the first round, they get seeded into their own second chance bracket. Completely separate from the main bracket, and those folks all shoot off against each other um, to determine a winner in that division as well, or that bracket as well. So you're guaranteed to shoot at least two times on the second day, and we have at least one. I think we actually have two, at least two side stages going on on the second day this year. So there's nice. plenty of opportunities to shoot on the second day. But and, um, and then new for oh go ahead. I was going to say, like last year, I'll be there uh, as well this year and uh, call on live action, which uh, which we'll then replay on the uh, the podcast here. But uh, if you're thinking about, if you're thinking like, oh, maybe I want to go, definitely go because this is a kick in the pants. It's a cool format, and there's going to be a lot of uh, cool side stuff there this year. And, uh, of course, I'll be there with, uh, with Adam, so come say hi for us. But I'm sorry, what were you going to say there, Adam? Absolutely. And I, you know, I might even throw in the towel early this year, just kind of like get eliminated in the second round so that I can just podcast with you. Cause that's really my favorite. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We, uh, so last year I got, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I got sent over to the, uh, the second chance Bay and, uh, whomever I was up against got a, a, a buy because I, I basically just, uh, piloted the, uh, the seat up there. 
But I did do a grudge match with Ryan Muckinern at the end, which was a, a, a good time. Right. And then new for this year, what we're going to do, last year, typically what we've done, so we've got prizes, right? Uh, and uh, this year, actually, we have set it up so that all the match sponsors are basically getting um, 501c3 credit for donating to the match. Because it so, benefits uh, Task Force Dagger, right? Yeah, this is a direct benefit to Task Force Dagger. Um, so um, all the proceeds are going to them. And uh, we've gotten a lot of sponsorship interest in that, especially on a, on a down year uh, industry-wise. Um, there's a lot of people who weren't otherwise interested in sponsoring matches that have sent us a lot of very nice stuff. Um, but the way we give it all away, uh, the, uh, the winner, the winner obviously gets to pick first. Um, second place gets to pick second. And then we, basically for the, the semifinalists, they pick an order as we traditionally would. And then, uh, as we go down, we go random draw by tier of finish. So... So the next bracket down from the semifinalists, we pull their names out of a hat, and they get to walk. Once all those guys have walked, we go to the next bracket down. All those people who are eliminated, we pull their names out of a hat, and then so on and so forth. So we, we, we do somewhat, somewhat random draw, but it's merit-based random draw because I, I still believe prizes are for winners. So in, in the, you know, according to the success level of your, of your performance at the match, within your tier of finish, uh, that's how we divide out out the prizes. Uh, we're also doing we're also doing two raffle guns this year. Uh, still trying to finalize the details on it. One of them is going to be a JP uh, JP15 for sure, and uh, I believe we're also going to do a Radian R1 is going to be Ooh. raffled off as well. Those Radians are nice. They are. They are. So Amanda was super the cool over at Radian. Yeah. And uh, PWS is on board, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to have some PWS guns. Um, I got some. I think we have some SLR stuff. We have some uh, Falcor barrels. We have Surefire lights. We have Fioki ammo. We have Safari Land certs. Got a lot, we got a lot of stuff. We got a big pile of stuff over over at the house. So, um, uh, yeah. So it's it, yeah. We crew scores on day one. Do a shoot off on day two, trying to do something a little bit different. I know there's a lot of matches on the schedule, trying to incentivize people to come do something a little bit different. I'm putting something else on the schedule. I feel like if you're going to put something else on the schedule, you got to bring something unique to the table. So this is the uh, this is the uh, the niche that I tried to uh, to pick up on. Uh, this is going to be the fifth time that we've run the match. So um, so that's my story. Yeah, still space is available and. Uh, Hope, hope people come out because we're we're really looking to um, I'm really looking to you know I in the past it was important to me for it to be a major match um, I would say that's become less important to me now I want to make it a good event uh, a fun event for everyone and it's a it's a benefit for the Task Force Dagger Foundation so my my real incentive is to make a really fun event that people want to come to so that we can generate. Uh, a lot of fun for, or uh, a lot of funds by having a lot of fun for a very worthy cause. Uh, last year we raised just shy of nine thousand dollars that we donated, and our goal this year, um, I set it at ten. Travis actually uh, was a bit more ambitious. He's trying to get to fifteen thousand dollars. Nice for the foundation. So, so and he's got he's got plans. Uh, so we're we're hoping we're hoping we can do it. I love it. Well, Adam, you're going to make me switch back to, uh, to TAC Ops to shoot that one, uh, which I'll totally do. And I'm looking forward to man, because last year was a bunch of fun. And if people want to sign up, there'll be a link in the show notes at 3gunshow.com or just look on Practice Score, search JKM, and you will find it. Oh, yeah, and uh, we got Wisconsin Brewing on board, so we're going to have at least two kegs of beer. Oh, hey. Kentucky guys, are you, are, are you, are you out there? <laughs> Kentucky guys like to uh, shoot. We'll say that. Um, yeah, they do. All right. But when so, the shoot is through, this bud's for you. <laughs> so, Adam, Dave, we talked about all kinds of different reasons to uh, to jump divisions. We talked about a couple plans that you and I each have to uh, play in different divisions. Uh, any final thoughts on division jumping? 
Uh, I think I just I think it's kind of an interesting phenomena uh, how when people change divisions, how like everyone thinks you're changing divisions to win or or you know people always like question your motives for jumping a division like yeah. hey you're a you're a tac optics shooter why are you shooting that division or you're a limited shooter why do you think you can shoot tac optics are you worthy dude that's a great point like people and you know what it is it, it's a uh i think it's like an innate human thing where i have you categorized in your head and if you jump out of that you have to you have to answer for it you have to justify yourself to me because now the math on Adam in my head doesn't add up and I need to justify that. I need to, I need to balance my balance sheet again. So maybe that's a, uh, maybe that's a part of it, but yeah. And I mean, like maybe I've been a j- division jumper all along because when I came out of, you know, uh, my, my newbie cocoon, like I, you know, the first optic I bought was an aim point red dot. That's what I started with. Um, so technically I started life as a limited shooter, quickly learned that that was kind of hard to do. So I bought a variable power optic and I started shooting TAC optics and I shot TAC optics for a few years. And then, uh, you know, last year I jumped to limited division. I shot limited exclusively for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, so everyone was kind of like, well, you're trophy hunting in limited division or you're slumming in limited or, you know, division jumping in limited. I was like, no, it was limited's fun, and I want to shoot limited. Like, what's what's the problem? It's a different and challenge, it, you know. Yeah, and and that's that's kind of the way that that I I view it now, because uh, I, I I've done the same thing. Like, you know, that doesn't make sense. Why are you not shooting limited, Adam? Go back to shooting limited. Make me feel better well, about myself. But well, and that's what's funny because I shot limited for a year and a half. Now that I'm not shooting limited this year, I went back. I, you know, I shot. I shot a major match in tech optics. It's like you're you're a limited shooter shooting tech optics. Like, yeah. I shot limited for a year and a half. All of a sudden, I'm a, <laughs> when I was in limited, I wasn't a limited shooter. Now that I'm out of limited, I'm a limited shooter like on the prowl again. You know, and you know, apparently open curious or whatever it is. It's like I just I just want to shoot guns and have fun. <laughs> and uh, this year, this you know, now I work for an optics company, so looking to explore more of our products. There just happens to be a division I can do that in, and you know what? It's uh, now that I've come this far, it looks like it might actually be kind of fun. So, gonna gonna shoot this division for a while, and we'll see if it's if it's super fun. I'll shoot it again next year, and if not, well, who knows what next year will bring? Nice. Well, for for me, there, you know, of course, it'd be nice to uh, to take home a uh, a W and uh, you know get to give you a hard time because i got the w with the uh, the huey and not you which actually that would make me really happy let's just call that maybe, my reasoning maybe i'll just shoot the huey and open so i can oh, you know, keep, the, keep the dream snap. alive oh snap but um i th- i think the uh at, at the end of the day it's it's about fun right and variety is fun novelty is fun and by novelty i mean like new things right so a stage plan with an eight round pump shotgun is completely different than my 12 round, uh, tack ops semi-automatic, right? It's, it's completely different than if I had a dissident arms Vepper, right? So there's that novelty to it. There's the, uh, the novelty of like, now I don't have any, um, uh, a powered optic. I'm playing with completely different people. I'm using different gear. There's all kinds of cool, cool stuff that goes along with that and different things you have to think of in not only your stage planning, but your match prep. Uh, and then just having something exciting and, and different to look forward to for me. So for me, it's all about the fun. I'm going to continue to shoot uh, different divisions as they come up, probably, you know, test them out in uh, in club matches instead of uh, majors like I'm doing with patrol here, but just seemed like a, a good, a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's a fun game people uh there's lots of fun guns to shoot so let's uh let's shoot them all whoa dude that's a great way to end the show so yes yes shoot them all shoot all the guns everybody you know anything else to say on that one i don't know i was i was leaving it quiet in case that's where you <laughs> wanted to cut it <laughs> all right well adam thanks for uh thanks for being a part of the show thanks for your uh perspective and for always jumping divisions and giving me something to talk about appreciate you buddy yeah may may not always win the divisions but we're we're gonna we're gonna at least keep it interesting you never know you never know where i'm gonna be a threat or maybe i'll just maybe i'll just tank who knows but but uh no i'm uh 
I'm definitely excited to shoot shoot these uh, these divisions or these matches I have coming up in in open division. So uh, ready to ready to ride the lightning. <laughs> and uh, if you're if you're division curious, it's okay. Just just give it a try. The division you're in will be there. It'll still be there when you when you come back. Yeah, if you come back, point. you know. Um, yeah, Tac Ops ain't but, going anywhere, so I'm just going to go play in a division for a little while, come back, and now I'll have a new uh, pump gun to play with. So, Well, well yeah, and, and I don't know, at the risk of, like, kick-starting the, the conversation again, like, that was always that was always kind of my fear. Yeah, dude. Like, when I was when I was in Tac Optics, going to major matches, I was like, you know, that looks like, that looks kind of like fun, but... But I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do well in that division. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, didn't want to, I didn't want to waste a trip on a major match. Like, you know, it's like, I'm, this is a major match. I want to, I want to do as well as I can. I don't necessarily want to throw that opportunity away on playing in another division. So I think that was, that was a really big step for me. The first time I signed up for a major match in limited was like, all right, I'm consciously deciding like. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone to shoot this major match in this other division. And I was really worried about it. And um, it turned out to be a lot of fun. And so I kind of, you know, now I kind of look back on some of those matches like, man, I kind of wish I would have tried it earlier. Um, or, you know, I'm less afraid. You know, I'm, you know, I'm all, you know, I was all in to shoot heavy metal at, at uh, Shooter Source. It, with guns that you know, I was gonna borrow a pump shotgun. I'm pretty comfortable with a 1911, and I had a 308 that I had some time on, but I basically threw a one to six on it and sighted it in like a week before I was gonna go. But I wasn't afraid of that anymore because when I jumped divisions the first time, like it was like, oh, this this is pretty fun. I wonder what other kinds of fun there are out there. Um, <laughs> You know, like you know, I mean, I mean, beer is good, but you know, I don't know, maybe whiskey's fun too. Yeah, who knows? It's Until like, you uh, try some, you know. It's like uh, the first gun you shoot; you want to shoot them all now. Exactly, exactly. So I think that's kind of where I'm like, I'm kind of like drunk on dr- division jumping, like <laughs> because I want to, I want to find out about all the other things. Now that I was so serious about tack optics for so long, it's like, well, let's let's learn about the other things, and and then as people, other people have uh, branched out. Like more people have branched out. I mean, I mean, Saws Forty One bought a uh, Vepper, you know. What? Um, yeah, yeah. So like all of a sudden, I was like, Saws, you know, Saws showed up at a club match that I wasn't that I wasn't at. So all of a sudden, Saws won one open. Like what? When did Chris start shooting open? You know, and and now you know, come on the podcast with Dave, and now Kevin's shooting open. It's like oh, Kevin's shooting open. Now? Yeah, right. You know who? You know, there's all kinds of people. Like every now that it's now that it's okay to jump divisions, like everyone else is trying out, and everyone's like, "Oh man, there's all there's all these other things out there," and maybe we just have all this pent up energy to to buy guns that we haven't been buying. You know, it's like it's okay. You know, go 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 buy that Vepper, try some open. You know, go buy that dot pistol, try some open. Maybe go buy that 308 you've been you've been craving. See if you can shoot some heavy. You know, I mean. Yeah, you know what's kind of funny? Like uh, people give me a hard time all the time when when they're like, you know, I'm thinking about buying this gun. I'm like, oh yeah, you should do it. You know, and they always, you know, tease me about being a an instigator. It's like, well, that's why you brought it up. You want permission. I'm giving you permission. So if you want permission to buy a gun, Dave will give it to you. I will yeah. absolutely tell you, yes, you should buy that gun. Buy that, buy that dissident arms Vepper and shoot open. Buy that, you know, Breda B12I. And uh, and shoot TAC ops or shoot limited. Buy the uh, the pump shotgun and shoot patrol or heavy. Yes, you do it. You deserve it. You work hard all week if, so you can have fun on the weekend, and you owe it to yourself to have the most fun possible. And you will do that by shooting more divisions. Adam, I think that's the best uh, place to end it here. Thanks, buddy, for uh, hanging in and for uh, being a part of the show. As always, I appreciate, it, man. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. Always good to be on the show. And uh, if you have any other ideas or stuff you want us to talk about, go ahead and feed them to Dave. Yeah, slide, ride, or die. Slide, ride, or die. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, before you take off, check out the show notes at 3 for links to things that we discussed in the podcast. This podcast is brought to you by Armalite, the original. Armalite rifles put the AR in AR-15. The rifles themselves come with 1 and 8 twist barrels, match barrels 18 inch or 13 and a half inch with a uh, 15 inch or 12 and a half inch handguard. Timney trigger, 
Luthar stock, adjustable uh, gas system, tunable comp, a patented tunable comp. This thing's ready to go right out of the box for a three gun with no additional modifications other than putting on a nice optic. I myself use a Vortex Viper PST 1 to 6 when I'm shooting TAC Ops or their Spitfire when I'm shooting Limited. Check them out at Armalite.com. Quick reminder that if you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, subscribe in iTunes, Google Play, Podcast Addict, or wherever you get your podcast content so you will always get the very latest. Thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'm Dave Hartman, and I'll see you on the range. If you are finished, unload show clear.